Hello folks, all you crazy kids in the VC and beyond. Uh, this is Mike, PC31, the vinyl policeman. And uh, today I'm going to do a pickups video. Haven't done one this year, so um, I'm way behind actually. But I've got some absolutely fabulous stuff to show you. Before I start, this is quite exciting. So the Pretenders album from last year, Relentless. Really enjoy it. And uh, book tickets to see the Pretenders uh in october and exciting stuff a real ticket look at that nowadays you get all these computerized ones on your phone etc and uh bought the tickets and was actually issued with some real tickets so really looking forward to that gig anyway what i'm going to do today folks is um got some great stuff i've picked up loads and loads of records in the last couple of months all of these ones as well and I'm um, going to take you through some of those. But uh, I've also picked up a lot of CDs, some box sets and various things. So I'm going to have a, a, a whip through those as well. So today, I'm sure I'm just going to go through this pile. I've got some fabulous things in there. I'm going to show you what I've got there. And then I'm going to cut it into two videos because I don't want to go beyond 15 minutes in each one. And then I'll pick out, I don't know, <laughs> it may be a part three, but I'll go through these ones or some of these ones as well in a in a part two maybe a part three i should see how it goes but um anyway i should keep it snappy to 15 minutes right okay folks i'm erect again um i've got some great music to show anyway uh let, let's start off with steve all the world's a stage his normal thing showing his t-shirt magazine's debut single shot by both sides new t-shirt Right, okay folks, got some fantastic stuff. Uh, before I show you any vinyl, and I've got quite a lot to show you, um, picked up a great book the other day, and it's um, limited edition, The Clash, bootlegged. So it basically goes through all of the Clash's bootlegs over the years, so it, so it gives you pictures of the bootleg, all the variants. It's just such a great, coffee table reference book superb and uh all these ones are all the clash bootlegs that i've got so but it's just it's a, it's a fascinating read it's just one that you, you every time you pick it up you learn something brilliant book absolutely fantastic um also picked up a couple of months ago now i think it was actually is um wanted this for a long time i think it came out in 2000 oh 220 not that long ago actually the Sex Pistols, 76, 77. And uh, as it says there on the label. So 76, 77, the complete demos and outtakes collection. 76, 77, four discs, pre including previously unreleased mixes. And this is obviously Pistols uh, lead up to Nevermind the Bollocks. And um, on di there's four discs in here. Disc one, you've got the Chris Spedding session. Uh, lots of repetition with, with tracks. You've got... If you enjoy studio, listening to studio outtakes and things, which I absolutely love and demos, this is fantastic because you, you see the actual um, beginnings of a lot of these tracks when they're actually being written. And there's some really interesting things like there's um, Substitute, The Who, uh, Stepping Stone, Johnny Be Good, Roadrunner, What You Gonna Do About It, tracks that you, you, know, you wouldn't normally hear from the Sex Pistols. But there's a quick look at the back. Four discs, as I say. But it's so complete. It's one of those things you, you put on. It's just really enjoyable. I've, I've played it several times now. And look at a quick look inside. You get the ribbon there. So you know it's going to be a good little box set. First thing you get is a little uh, booklet. Great pictures from the time. Again, so all 76, 77. More detail about the tracks, credits, etc. Just a little, just a little booklet. All things at the time. Great stuff. And then you get your four discs. This one, this two, this three, and this four. Uh, bonus discs, spunk, bootleg, 
rejected and alternative vocal versions, rough mixes, alternative mixes, demos, outtakes. Uh, Mike Thorne, Manchester Square Studio Session 76. Dave Goodman, Eden Studio Mixes 77. Dave Goodman, River Riverside Studio Mixes 77. Chris Spedding, Original Session 76. Dave Goodman, Dave Goodman. So if you like the Pistols, if you like Nevermind the Bollocks, uh, this is a fabulous little box set to pick up. It really is. Next box set I picked up. Also, this is this is all CD so you're based at the moment. Um, one of my favourite bands from that punk era, The Ruts. And uh, The Ruts only, only made two studio records. Well, one and a half, effectively. So The Crack, as I've shown many times before. And The Crack is the one that um, Henry Rollins uh, bought the original artwork, which I've spoken about before. And... Um, yeah, where, where you've got the so your cartoon characters and um, there's, you know, Jimi Hendrix is in the picture, John Peel, uh, The Damned, various people. But that is the absolute classic um, Ruts album. Then you've got Grin and Bear It, which was the second album, which was, I think it was released just after uh, the lead vocalist, Malcolm Owen, passed away. So it was a combination of new material on its way to being their second studio album, but then there was some live work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, also in this box set, this little box set. So number one disc is the crack, which I'll show you in a second. Number two is Grin and Bear It. Number three is at the BBC. One, two, three John Peel sessions, and BBC in concert. And the fourth disc is a whole gig from the Marquee in London, July 1979, and it's absolutely fantastic. It's so raw and punk. It's just superb. And uh, look inside that box. Opens up like that. Again, little booklet. And the booklet has got the albums there. Then there is some good narrative in this one, actually. Story of the Ruts. And uh, they split up after Malcolm Owen died. But then they reformed as Ruts DC a little bit later. But the Ruts, the original two albums, fantastic. So that was the original one. Even even got even replicated the sticker, three pound ninety nine there. So and this is the one with obviously Babylon is burning on. Just one of the all time classic songs. Grin and bear it. That's the BBC sessions. Fantastic with the quality, really, really good. As I say, three John Peel sessions January 79, May 79, February 80, and then a BBC in concert July 79. And then to top it all, July 79, Marquee, the rats, and you got a full gig with encores. Really superb. Uh, loving that, playing that lots and lots at the moment. Another CD box set. Uh, I've got all of these apart from one on vinyl three original slow dive albums and um the one i never had actually was pygmalion and uh there we are so the three three so just for a day slovaki and pygmalion and uh i'm actually loving pygmalion at the moment it's probably the least shoegaze of all of them but um Absolutely loving that at the moment. And in there, you've just got the three discs, which I won't take out. I mean, but yeah, slow dive. Really good. Um, just quickly ripping through. Been playing this a lot recently. Picked it up. This this was secondhand, actually. Alabama 3 from Brixton. They've made loads and loads of albums. Such a great group. The reason I started playing this was um, started after all these years of watching Sopranos. And the um, the theme tune comes from this, this album, uh, Woke Up This Morning. Is such a fantastic track. It's a really good album. Sent um, Steve all the way to the stage a couple of Brown Sabbath VC, VCRT. Brown Sabbath, they're the, the funk, jazz fusion, um, Black Sabbath tribute almost. But they're absolutely superb band. About eight, nine piece bands, something like that. And this is a, a CD of theirs called Brown Sabbath Volume 2, which um, I've got the vinyl on, but I picked up got the vinyl but i've picked up the cd as well got a bob mold during the month workbook great stuff 
Uh, metric, Art of Doubt, very different from Bob Mould. Got this one on vinyl, but um, this would be great for the car, etc. The Nationals Classic High Violet. Um, High Violet, superb album. So many great, great tracks on that one. It's a really clever album. Um, because of uh, Brian at um, Embryonic Robot, when one of his travel log videos, he played some Brian Eno, and it was superb. It, it, it matched in with the pictures so so well. It was a really good of, uh, bit of um, Scorsese-ness from Brian Embryonic Robot. And um, Brian told me it was from this. So uh, the Apollo. So Brian Eno with uh, Daniel Lenoir and Roger Eno, his brother. Brian Eno's brother, of course. Fantastic. Uh, Breeders, Mountain Battles, picked up about a month ago, playing that lots. And um, just the other day, so I've only played this one so far, but Spiritualize, who were obviously uh, Spaceman 3, this is Amazing Grace. This is a strange album, actually. I've only played it once. It's... Um, I don't like the production at the moment. It's kind of very up and down. It goes from very guitar based to emptying out almost too much. It's it's not a very um the, the actual sequencing of the album I don't like very much at the moment. And uh so I'm not totally getting this one at the moment. But um but there are some great songs on it. But as I say, it's not a very coherent album. Um okay. Right, folks, I've um, waffled on far too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a time in to show you when I start reviewing the vinyl because um, I've spent a long time on um, those CD box sets, etc. So, OK, first things first, a couple of Clash bootlegs I picked up during the month, which I just wanted to show you, and they're in that book I showed you earlier. So live at Birmingham, top rank, 7th of November 1977. So the Clash, this particular bootleg is called Get Out of Control At live at Birmingham um absolutely brilliant the sound quality is not fantastic um I don't think it's it's not a soundboard but it's a it's a pretty good quality record for what it is as a bootleg and all the songs are clear um Joe's talking between the songs is clear so it's very very enjoyable uh yeah that's a great one and the second one is called the New Testament Cut the Crap Demos and The Clash and it is all the demos for the Cut the Crap album. Green vinyl, the other one's black vinyl. So really pleased to pick those up during the month. Uh, next one, uh, Kim Gordon of Sonic Youth. So this was, her fa this was her debut solo album called No Home Record. It's It's a strange record, actually. It's quite, it's very experimental, which as a, as a, as I guess Kim Gordon kind of would be, because it's the nature of the beast. Um, quite industrial. There's a few real standout tracks there. Um, is it fantastic start to finish? No. Would I recommend it? If you like Kim Gordon, if you like Sonic Youth, yeah, I definitely would. But if you're, if you're a casual sort of like fan of Sonic Youth, probably not so much, because it's um, quite hard to get into. Is the back cover, I see. The track which triggered it all, apparently, was Murdered Out. She she got together. She met um, Justin Raisin, who produced the album and played a lot of the instruments on it as well. But I'm looking forward this Friday, actually, to um, Kim Gordon's second solo album. And um, some of the tracks which were on YouTube, they sound really good. So I think that might be stronger than, stronger than the debut. Now, this one, I feel a complete fool because I have never owned this record um i don't even think for some reason i had it on cd i picked it up the other day and it's just a, a classic and it's the stooges debut i can't believe i didn't own this record from the first play i mean 1969 want to be your dog we were four absolutely fantastic side one side two no fun real cool time and not right little doll such a brilliant album and as I say, it's one of those classic moments that I thought, why on earth? How wasn't this in my collection? Why have I not played this before? Got loads of Iggy. Um, I just never owned this record. But, uh, colour of vinyl is wrong. But loving it. Absolutely great record. 
Now, a few weeks ago, I think it was about three weeks ago, Letitia Sadier of um, Stereo Lab, or, or yeah, I think it's still Stereo Lab, yeah, um, produced this album and um, a fifth solo album, Rooting for Love. Um, I've only played this a couple of times so far. Great, it's a good album, really enjoy it. Very easy listening. Um, Mrs. PC1, Mrs. PC31 likes it, so that's always a bonus. Uh, is it as good as the work she did with Modern Cosmology and um, M Mabumbio, Brazilian group? Probably not at the moment for me, but I've only played it a couple of times. But uh, look at the vinyl, look at that splatter, absolutely amazing. But um, it's an enjoyable album, so I've got no complaints about it whatsoever. But kind of, I guess I'd built it up a bit and I was expecting a lot, lot more because of how good modern cosmology was. But, you know, it's a grower. And also, during the last couple of months, I've been um, growing my um, Stereo Lab collection. So I've got Margarine Eclipse. It's one of these triple albums where you've got original album plus all the demos and remixes and things and posters and download codes. Absolutely fantastic things. And I also got um, Stereo Lab Cobra and phases group play voltage in the milky night where mike uh, play Von in the milky night got his name from but uh, again it's one of these triple albums really superb value download codes uh yeah superb album came out last friday from um which mike Von sparrow would have definitely picked up because one of his favorite groups yardak where's my Utopia, and uh, yeah, it's, it's it's a good album. It builds on their debut, which was um, last year or year before, year before twenty twenty two, and I think it was the end of twenty twenty two. But uh, yeah, good album. Picked up orange vinyl. Also picked up a tote bag as well. So if you if you didn't pick up a tote bag, Mike, let me know and uh, I'll send you that. But yeah, good album, indie rock. It, it, for me, it, so much of this band is about the lead vocalist, James Smith, because his vocal style is very um, narrative, very hip-hoppy, uh, but he does it so well. The, the lyrics are great, and you get some um, terrific booklets with this. I must show you, actually. You get some terrific artwork with this, which kind of really adds to the package. So let's see. Orange, orange, why not? There's the back. And inside, let's see that your inner sleeve. Terrific artwork. And you also get this pullout, which um, has got all the lyrics, things on, and lots more artwork as well. So loads and loads of stuff come with it. And also to pull off and do a bit of a, a Sergeant Pepper with, you can pull off these sticky figures and stick them where you want. I won't be sticking them anywhere, but uh, nice to have. Okay, next up is uh, the uh, T-shirt magazine. This is a, a live album. They're only, the only live album that they released uh, when they were together and it's called play and um great picture in the front there in the studio this is a fantastic live album it's so difficult i think to capture a really good live album a good gig on record but this is absolutely captured so so well song run on the floorboards i mean light pours out with me um shot from both sides i mean the versions on here this hasn't got john mckeock on um guitar but it's robin simon who joined the band just for this particular tour john mckeer could already already left the band unfortunately but really great great live album 1980 um it was between the third and fourth albums between soap and, and magic and murder and uh ben rankins it was recorded in melbourne what about that the bishop of melbonia it was, it was recorded there fantastic next one up is um I've got an OG of this, but never owned this before. Came across it, uh, 
second hand from a, from a collection. It's the Who live at Leeds, but it's the entire Leeds gig. Was that 14th of February, Valentine's Night, 1970? Um, and then they played Hull the following night, just in case there was any technical problems with this gig. But it's the whole of the Leeds gig that night. And it's um, Deluxe Edition. I thought this was celebrating some sort of anniversary, but it was released apparently 2016, this particular issue. And um, Half Speed Mastering. So it was Master of the Abbey Road Studios. Uh, this record was cut using half speed mastering and the quality is fantastic absolutely superb yeah the complete 33 track set from leeds university 14th of february 1970 and uh where well, you've got the whole tommy sections but so there's the track listing from the night oh sorry about that great record really good record i'm going to see um mickey Barini in a couple of weeks. Mickey Barini was the, she was the lead singer um, in Lush and um, she's doing a book signing. So I've got some tickets. I'm going to go, I'm going to go and see that. And uh, I actually picked up, I didn't have this one. I think Lush only made three studio albums, I believe. Anyway, this is, this is the third one, which I picked up the other day. So this is um, Love Life. And uh, yeah, it's, Lush album, Shoegaze, yeah. Probably, probably, probably the third at the moment out of three for me. Where, whereas, um, Spooky and Split would still be ahead of the game for me. But uh, this came out in 1996, and uh, so I'm pleased to get a hold of that one anyway. But uh, Mickey Barini actually, um, set up another band called um, Piroshka. And uh, they've only made two albums so far. This is the debut album. Because I'm going to see Nikki and uh, Mickey in a, in a couple of weeks' time, I thought I'd get these two albums, which weren't in my collection. And they're, they're not as shoegaze. It's classic Mickey Barini, you know, her voice, her style. But it's, they're not as shoegaze. And there is some strong material on it. But the first one's called Brick Bat. And I think this is probably the best at the moment. Good album. And uh, the follow-up, which is called uh, Love Drips and Gathers, Poroshka, is that one, which I've got on clear vinyl. So, pleased to get those. And the final two, folks. Sorry, this is much longer than I expected. Um, 1986, six uh, the ninth album, actually. Good old XTC from Swindon. Didn't have this in the collection, so which is remiss because this is a terrific XTC album, and um, just picked up a really good second-hand copy. So pleased to get that into the collection. And the final thing is um, went to another signing, record signing of Cooler Shaker's um, Natural Magic. Cooler Shaker, their seventh album, which was released to say about about three weeks ago. Cooler Shaker with Crispin Mills. It's the original, they're back with the original lineup now, which they had in the 90s when they made the brilliant K album. Um, Govinda was the huge single, etc. In case you don't know them, they're very psych, um, indie rock, but very psych, got this Indian Eastern influence. Uh, terrific band. I mean, they, they don't make bad records. And um, I'll say this is their latest record. And so spoke to them. What have we got there? Hello, Mike. Hello, Mike. And the, all the guys have signed it. A few little symbols and things. Crispin Mills there. Really nice bunch of guys, actually. Very, very easy to talk to. Lots of time for their fans. And uh, this album this album's described the vinyl as tie-dye. That particular thing, like a splatter. But, yeah, good, strong album. They always make strong albums. The material's strong. There's really clever things on there. Very, very interesting. So please go to that one. So as I say, folks, I've picked up loads and loads more, a real mixture of um, vinyl. The, the part two I should do will be all solid vinyl. So, uh, and I should be trying to post that in the next couple of days. So thanks for watching. Speak again soon.